Hey everyone. I've published a couple of videos where I've gone into the archives of the website Daily Cribbage Hand, and I've analyzed two of the most commonly featured hands from the history of that website. I've looked at the top discard choice, as voted by users, and I've compared it against the discard choice with the highest expected average value. For this video, I'm going to fast forward a bit to get to the fundamental essence of what those videos were trying to accomplish. If you're not familiar with Daily Cribbage Hand, since early 2007, the site has featured a different cribbage hand every day, where users can suggest different hands and then can vote on which discard pair they would discard for a given hand. There's a comment section where users can discuss their choices and strategy with other users. Here's the hand and results from April 6, 2021. The page shows the six card hand, so three, three, four, five, six queen. The current score, 73 to 86. The asterisk indicates we are the dealer and the voting results. Out of 246 total votes cast, 56% of votes were for the six queen discard and the user comments are found below. The site offers an interactive way to practice discarding and it's worth checking out. You can see others' choices and read the comments and maybe learn something that you maybe didn't know previously. I'll include a link to the site in the description below. Now for the purpose of this video. When I discovered Daily Cribbage Hand, I noticed there was a link to previously featured hands. Past results. And I discovered that I was able to go back years and years into the history of the site. I thought, there's a lot of historical information here that has a lot of value. The value is that you could take that information, learn from it, and apply it to your game to improve your success at cribbage. The challenge, though, was that all of this good historical data was kind of buried and not very well organized. So I decided to dig it up. I wrote a code that essentially scraped all of the data, basically extracting all of it, every hand, every board position, all of the votes from each day, and I put all of that data into a database. Once I had all the data extracted and cleaned up, then I could look at the data holistically and even work with it to make sense of it. For example, I could quickly filter by hand, this column, and use simple formulas to determine hand frequency to see how often certain hands have been featured and which specific hands have been featured more often than others. This would give me an idea of which hands were thought to be tricky and therefore worth learning about. I could then look at the votes for each of these instances and pretty quickly see if there were any discarding patterns that I could find in the data. But there was something even more interesting that I was able to do and I wanted to share it here because it's helped my game and I hope it will help yours as well. So let's get into it. There are two main concepts that you need to know, not only for the purpose of this video, but also because knowing them will improve your success at cribbage. The first concept is expected average. I covered this concept in a previous video, and if you've been following my channel, you'll know this concept is about using math and probability to calculate for any given hand, which discard will reward you with the highest net total points, basically the maximum point potential. The second concept is board position. I covered this concept as well in my video on the theory of 26. This concept is about playing strategically based on where you are on the cribbage board and in relation to where your opponent is as well. In this strategy, there may be times where you choose not to maximize your hand potential in favor of keeping a hand that slows down your opponent. In other words, limits the amount of points your opponent will score. Both of these strategies are important to know, and they both feed into the discarding decisions made by users who visit Daily Cribbage Hand. Each hand receives over 200 votes. I've even trended this. As you can see in this graph, the number of voters has gradually increased over the history of Daily Cribbage Hand. And in 2021, the majority of hands receive anywhere between 200 
and 250 votes. And 200 votes is a pretty good sample size to get a gauge on which discard folks think is the best one for that particular hand for that particular position on the board. And I figure if a person is visiting daily cribbage hand and casting a vote, it's fair to assume they're passionate about the game and likely a decent player. The first hand on daily cribbage hand appeared on February 2nd, 2007. Up to and including April 1st, 2021, there have been 4,844 hands featured. So I have all of this historical data that I scraped from Daily Cribbage Hand. I wanted to know how often does this top voted discard choice on Daily Cribbage Hand match up to the mathematically optimal choice. So I decided to do that analysis. And here's what I found. The crib board can be partitioned into four sections. These sections are known as streets. The first street is from zero to 30 points. The second street is from 31 to 60 points. The third street is from 61 to 90 points. And fourth street is 91 to 120 points. When I ran a comparison of the top voted discards from Daily Cribbage Hand, against the discards with the highest expected average value, I noted a significant match. On first street, across thousands of hands and positions, 71% of the time, the top discard voice on daily cribbage hand matched the discard option with the highest expected average value. On second street, Again, across thousands of hands and thousands of different positions, 74% of the time, so a slight increase, the top discard choice on daily cribbage hand, so the discard that voters chose on that site matched the discard option with the highest expected average value. On third street, 75% of the time there was a match. And on fourth street, 66% of all discards matched. The table here at the bottom summarizes this data. I've included the percentages for when players are on different streets as well. For example, when player one is on first street and player two is on second street, we see the discard match percentages are slightly higher than when players are on the same relative position on the board. So what does this all mean? Overall, analyzing over 4,800 hands on Daily Cribbage Hand, the top discard choice on Daily Cribbage Hand matched the discard option with the highest expected average value 71% of the time, so 7 out of 10 times. We see the folks on Daily Cribbage Hand tended to favor expected average on streets 1, 2, and 3. The average of these three streets is 73.5%. So across over 4,800 hands, 73.5% of the time, so nearly 3 out of 4 times, regardless of where they were on the cribbage board between 0 points and 90 points, the users on daily cribbage hand chose the discard that would maximize their hand potential. We see that the percentage on 4th street is 66%. And this slight decrease makes sense, because if we think about the end of the game, our approach can change. Pegging can be critical to getting to 121 points before your opponent does, and keeping good pegging cards can be generally, generally more favorable than trying to maximize point potential in your hand. So you may discard in a way that keeps a better pegging hand, which may be worth 6 points for example, over a hand that would otherwise earn you 12 points. We also see that when players are on different streets, the match percentages are slightly higher. This makes sense, because if there's a wide separation of points between players, the best strategy might be to try to grow that margin of separation by trying to maximize hand value. In other words, if your opponent is far ahead of you or significantly behind you, you're probably going to try to get the maximum amount of hand points that you can. Therefore, you're probably going to lean toward expected average more than board position. The analysis that I performed here gives percentages which, in my view, are significantly high enough to draw some conclusions from. So to summarize, 
Early in the game, even up to the 90 point mark, focus on maximizing your score and minimizing your opponent's score. This means using the strategy of expected average, maximizing your hand and crib point potential. If you aim to maximize your point potential and give less consideration to board position, you're going to see yourself winning more games. Nearing the end of the game, however, position is critical because you'll want to be in a position to count first or peg first to get to 121 points. So the strategy here is position, playing defense to slow down your opponent, keeping good pegging cards, things like that. Ultimately, expected average and board position are both important strategies in improving cribbage success, and they should be employed throughout the game. Lastly, two excellent resources that you should know about. The first one is Cribbage Discards by Anthony Myers. This book tells you the optimal discard for every possible cribbage hand based on maximizing point potential. I reviewed this book in a previous video and I think it's excellent and worth checking out. And the second is Playing Winning Cribbage by Dylan Colvert. This book covers board position and the theory of 26. This book is well loved among cribbage fans and probably doesn't need a hands-on review, but I may do one in the future. If you have any questions about the data or if there's anything else you're curious about from the history of Daily Cribbage Hand, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll be happy to respond to it. As always, thanks so much for watching.